am Papetra Akite and I am just crazy about insects. Um, I mostly work on butterflies and moths. My first encounter with insects was actually when I was less than three years old. And um, I used to follow my father, mostly to the gardens when he was digging. And uh, the most beautiful thing about my insect encounter was taking cocoons that he had dug out of the ground and keeping them and after a while they merge into this beautiful moth. And I found that quite intriguing. But also where I grew up was really wild nature. You know, we grew up in the wild. And so every turn had an insect. All the caterpillars on trees, all these other insects. I also grew up keeping bees, which are also insects. So I had my own hive as a child. And uh, over the years, that fascination has remained with the insects, really. TBA, which is the Tropical Biology Association course, practically launched me into my butterfly or insect career. Because um, over the years I'd studied things, you know, studying insects at university, but as it is with a lot of degree courses, students get out of university without actually knowing how to apply what it is they've studied. So for me, after my degree and going into a TBA course, it was like the best transition I could have ever had. And from whatever I learned through my TBA course, that one month has remained as the most treasured moment of all my career. And right now, it's just the thing I live for. It's purely insect conservation, insect um, for livelihoods, and insects for whatever insects can be used for. That is really my world. I'm very, very happy that uh, recently I have a moth that has been named after me. It's called uh, Megahapatis akitei. And uh, this would have not been possible if it wasn't for uh, a, a symposium that was built around building capacity in Lepidoptera for African scientists. I know that has been like, a, should I say, a scientific celebrity kind of platform for me because, uh, you know, when I tell these stories to young children, uh, you know, try to get them engaged in science and say, you could name, you could work hard and get something named after you. And then I ask them, can you decide which name you would want? And they gave me so many kind of really nice names. But and, and I, I feel honored because I know this is launching them into the world of conservation and into the world of insects using just the fact that something can be named after you. This is a, definitely a very great achievement because not everybody gets their name engraved in science. So definitely it is one of those great achievements. I really, uh, come from the angle of studying insects for their usefulness rather than for their much demonized vector or pest, you know, angle. Because uh, a lot of people don't like insects because they think all oh, insects are nuisance. But actually insects are very important. Butterflies and a lot of other insects are, are actually holding the key to the human survival as far as food production is concerned because they are the major pollinators. Whether it's just wild trees or cultivated crops, over 80% of these are pollinated by insects. And so it is without a doubt that if we don't save our insects, then we are not saving ourselves. And butterflies are now fronted, butterflies and the moth are fronted as the second largest insect pollinators, just lying behind the honeybees. And so we really need our butterflies for the ecosystem services that they offer to us. And several others, in other places, the caterpillars are also eaten as food. And actually, the insect for food and feed industry is one of the fastest growing. Um, I'll give you an example that aquaculture has become a big industry. But for this industry to, sust to be sustained, the biggest challenge they have is food and protein. And because the usual protein source is also overexploited, 
the next resort is in the insect world. And that is why we need our insects in order to guarantee our own survival. In the greatest impact of all this conservation work that I've had has been actually training more uh, resource persons. Um, and actually the, the biggest platform I've had with sharing my conservation interest and conservation knowledge has been on the TBA courses. And uh, I'm always honored that now when I travel to many countries, all I get are my former students and, uh, you know, getting celebrated in conservation. But the beautiful thing is that the individuals are also working in conservation well. So training platform uh, that has been offered to me has been, uh, you know, very, very great with TBA. But I also teach at the university. Um, of course, at the university, it's a difficult kind of training because uh, there's a lot of theoretical things. And I've been trying my best to actually introduce the practical aspect of conservation in every single course that I teach and in every single, with every single student that I interact with. So there is one thing to be taught about insects, but there's one thing to actually know that you could use insects to actually define your career. Um, I think for me, at the moment, I'm possibly among less than 10 individuals who are practicing entomologies, conservation entomologies. We are possibly less than five, so to say. And the other are people I'm trying to train now to come on board. So really, the platforms for training is still very wide and we need to launch our, our customer nets a little wider. Well, thinking from my personal uh, experience, I think one of the biggest things that has held back conservation scientists in Africa is actually the knowledge gap. I think there are people who would want to be in conservation, but that knowledge is just not there. And so I found platforms like TBA very useful uh, because uh, over the years I've actually got my students who have you know, graduated from university to go into TBA to get trained, um, you know, a more practical aspect of uh, conservation. And a lot of people, when we think in terms of conservation, they're thinking nature only. But the big question is, are human beings not part of this ecosystem? And indeed we are, and a very big stakeholder in the ecosystem. So I found pl uh, training platforms like TBA very useful because they engage not only the nature, but also the social aspect of conservation. And um, I think we really need to dedicate more time and resources to training, uh, you know, because any skilled community will definitely do something much bigger than just, you know, trying to rely on the unskilled uh, knowledge that we have. Um, it's been very uh, important in trying to integrate the local knowledge into conservation. Because just thinking that a forest like this would not have been here if the people who are older had not actually conserved it. That means there was a way that they saw conservation. There's a way they practice conservation. And the current generation of conservationists need to tie in this knowledge with the current scientific knowledge and that way conservation will really work.